Okay, we're going to look at uh, where a function is incre increasing and decreasing. Um, our first uh, example is pretty straightforward. It's just a parabola. Uh, so let's take a look at the graph. Uh, as you can see, uh, here's our parabola, and there's a midpoint, excuse me, a minimum down here at 3, comma, negative 1 for this parabola right here. So since there's a midpoint, uh, the function is clearly um, decreasing to the left of 3 and increasing to the right. Um, so we want to use calculus to verify that. And the way we can do that is with the first derivative, um, that when the first derivative is uh, negative, you know the function is decreasing. And when the first derivative is positive, you know the function is increasing. So let's just use the test for increasing and decreasing to determine when this function is increasing and decreasing. First thing we want to do is take the derivative of our function. So f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 6, set our derivative equal to 0 to find the critical value. And then from that, we'll be able to determine when the function is increasing and decreasing. So we want to set up a little table here. We're going to call the table test for increasing and decreasing. So we want to label what the uh, test is that we'll be um, doing here. Um, so the first point that we have is 3, because that was the critical value of the derivative. So we got to take 3 and plug it into this function. So f of 3, I already happen to know, is equal to negative 1. So this is common negative 1. So there's our point. The next thing we want to do is there are the interval is broken up by 3, so we're going to have two intervals when x is less than 3 and when x is greater than 3. And then on each one of those intervals, we're going to want to evaluate the sine of f prime of x. f prime of x. So a number that's to the left of 3 would be f prime of f prime of 2 and a value to the right of 3 would be f prime of 4. So we want to evaluate the derivative at 2 and 4, determine the sign of uh, the derivative at those values, and then therefore we can make conclusions about whether the function is increasing and decreasing on this interval and this one over here. So f prime of 2, plugging it into our derivative, f prime of 2 would be 2 times 2 minus 6, which is equal to negative 2, which is less than 0. And we want to do f prime of 4 would be 2 times 4 minus 6, which is positive 2, which is greater than 0. So since, um, so down here we're going to make our conclusion. The function is decreasing here and increasing on this side. So we just want to write out um, our intervals where the function is increasing. Uh, the function is increasing greater than 3, so it will be 3 to positive infinity. We don't need the positive there. 3 to infinity, infinity, excuse me, and it's obviously decreasing from negative infinity to 3. Let's take a look at the graph again. So you'll notice that uh, the function is decreasing here all the way up to positive 3 and then increasing on this side. And we use calculus to verify that using the sign of the first derivative. So you'll notice now I have the function graphed as well as its derivative written right here. f of x is 2x plus 6. We already, that should be 2x minus 6. Why is that like that? There's a little negative sign there. I did not see it. Okay, so notice that here is my derivative. Notice that the derivative is negative to the left of positive 3, and the derivative is positive to the right of positive uh, the right of positive 3. So since the derivative is negative, that means that my function is decreasing. So a negative derivative gives a decreasing function. A positive derivative gives an increasing function. So notice at 0, my derivative is, um, excuse me, at 3, my derivative is 0. And that is where my original function has a horizontal tangent. So using the derivative, we can make conclusions about um, the original function f. And that's what we did here. We used the derivative to make conclusions about the original function. The derivative was negative. My function is decreasing. My derivative is positive. My function is increasing. Let's try another example. Okay, we want to see, let me make that larger. 
So we want to see where this function is increasing and decreasing. So obviously we're going to use the test for increasing and decreasing, which is just the first derivative. So first thing we want to do is take the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 2 times a third times x to the negative 2 thirds plus 1. So therefore my derivative is 2 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds plus 1. We want to set this equal to 0. A good practice whenever you have a negative exponent is to write it in the denominator. And then get a common denominator. So uh, my common denominator is just going to be 3x to the 2 thirds. So I'm going to put 3x to the 2 thirds here. 3x to the 2 thirds here. And then now I can, so this is times, this is a multiplication, if you will. So this is 2 plus 3x to the 2 thirds all over 3x to the 2 thirds equals 0. So we want to know when the want to know our critical values. Well, our critical values is when the derivative is equal to zero and when the derivative is undefined. So when a derivative is equal to zero, you set the numerator to equal to zero. So we do two plus three x to the two thirds equals zero. Um, so therefore, I get I move the two over. I get three x to the two thirds equals negative two. Let me just move down a little. Uh, and then I divide by 3, so I get x to the 2 thirds equals negative 2 thirds. And then I take, I raise both sides to the 3 halves power, so that's negative 2 halves, 2, two thirds, excuse me, to the 3 halves power. Well, the denominator is 2 in this fractional exponent, and that's the same as taking the square root. So I can't take the square root of a negative, so this doesn't give us a critical value. So there is no time in which the derivative equals 0. The derivative is undefined when we set the denominator equal to zero. Well, if I divide by three and take the three halves, the raised to all sides of the three halves, I get x equals zero. So my only critical value um, is just going to be zero. So we're going to do the test for increasing and decreasing again. So I'm going to create a little chart here. We're going to write test. Okay, so my point is zero. Well, if f of zero is pretty straightforward. f of zero is just zero plus zero. So my point is zero comma zero. My intervals is when x is less than zero and x is greater than zero. Then we want to consider the sign of f prime of x, a number to the left of zero would be f prime of negative one and f prime of one. So f prime of negative one is 1 1.66, which is greater than zero, and f prime of one is, excuse me, is also 1 1.66, which is greater than zero. So therefore, on either side of zero, uh, our conclusion about f of x is the function is increasing to the left of 0 and also increasing to the right of 0. So my increasing interval is going to be from negative infinity to 0, from 0 to positive infinity, and notice that I don't include 0. Um, because the function, the derivative is not, um, is undefined at x equals zero. You, and, and we'll look at that in a second. I believe there's a vertical um, tangent at x equals zero. So we don't want to include zero. So therefore we say negative infinity is zero because it's not differentiable at zero. And we just want to write down decreasing even though it's not decreasing anywhere. Let's take a look at the graph. Uh, this is the wrong graph. So you look at the graph, as we move to left to right, clearly the function is increasing, uh, except it's pretty clear you can see here that if you were to create a tangent line at the origin, it would be vertical. So therefore, it's not differentiable at x equals 0. So it's increasing everywhere except at x equals 0. And so that's how we write it out here in interval notation. Let's take a look at the derivative at the same time. 
so here's our derivative. Here's our derivative. Uh, notice that the derivative is above the y axis, excuse me, above the x axis the whole time. So the derivative is positive always, saying that the function is increasing. Positive derivative, increasing function. And notice that there's like a there is a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, um, because really this could be written down in the denominator, so therefore x uh, cannot equal zero. So therefore it's not differentiable at x equals zero. And how is that shown? Well, there's a vertical asymptote here. If we turn that off, it's pretty it's easier to see that there's a vertical asymptote there. So the function is increasing everywhere because my derivative is positive everywhere except at x equals zero where the derivative is undefined. So therefore it's not differentiable at x equals zero.